Okay, so this is a 10-digit redstone clock that I created. It goes in two-second intervals, and it goes all the way up to nine years, 364 days, 23 hours, 59 minutes, and 58 seconds. What well, Everybody says, why does it go in two-second intervals? Well, with the number of ticks that there are in the for um, redstone repeaters, it was easier to do two-second intervals in one second and with piston timing and everything else. So... That's what I did. I went with two second intervals on it. So that way it's actually an accurate timing on that. So it should be pretty cool. It's going to loop over in just a second here, and we'll see. Yeah, let me go over to night. Okay, here we go. Zero. Now the nine is going to go to zero. That's minutes. Hours is going to go to 24. Okay. Now days are going. Okay, now watch, years is going to go to one. There we go. So, pretty cool. Now, you can you probably noticed how the 365 went all the way back to zero. I didn't want to make it go and turn off. It was possible to do it, but it just didn't bother with it. So, it goes all the way up to 399, and then it loops back to zero. Same thing with the 24 hours. It goes to 29 and then goes back to zero. That way I didn't have to bother with turning it off. When I started this thing, I was originally going for one of the 20-minute Minecraft clocks. It was sort of a joke my brother and I had back and forth whether or not I'd be able to create one that made years. Because I went and I made it do hours. And they said, oh, well, see if it can do days. So then we got it doing days. And then they figured, well, why not make it do years, too? So now we can keep track of any time we want to. So... How does this thing work? From the front, it looks like, okay, there's numbers there. Well, there's a lot of stuff that we put into it. I, I did it. I built the whole thing, but no oh, clouds are on there. Here, let me turn off the clouds real fast. Options. Controls. Oh, no, that's cool. Video settings. There we go. Clouds off. Okay. Back again. So, as you can see, this thing is giant. It's not really space friendly. If I were going to go back, I could make it a lot smaller next time, but it just wasn't. I, I started off building and I figured, you know what, I'm just going to stick to the same exact concept and I didn't deviate too much. So, So that's how big it is. It goes back a long ways. But let me show you the basic the basic digits up here at the front. Because this is where everything actually happens that makes this thing work. So what we have up here, we have a little bit of a delay. Here, let me turn on um, day. Okay, there. Now hopefully the monsters start to disappear. So... We have a little um, redstone timer there. That's for two second intervals in there. We're having a little bit of lag issues. So two second intervals are going through this thing. We just can't see it moving because there's so much lag. So what happens? The pistons fire and they push around these quartz blocks. What the quartz block does is it transfers electricity from the redstone, um, from the redstone below into there, and each one of these. Each one of these lines is programmed in for a different number. It's just all redstone operated. It's it's pretty simple. There's a YouTube video on that. So just look up redstone clock, and that's how I made this. So we go over, and when this one, so when this hits zero again, I know that I need to loop back, and that sends a pulse over to this one. So when this go, when the first seconds hit zero. Then we go, and the 10 seconds goes. 
So here we go. 10 seconds is going to go right here. Boom. So now 10 second one. Once 10 second gets all the way back to zero again, that sends a pulse over to one minute. So then one minute goes. So one minute gets a pulse and then one minute goes. When one minute hits zero, that sends a pulse over to this one. This is tens of minutes. When tens of minutes hits zero again, that sends a pulse over to hours. So hours goes. When hours gets to zero, then that sends a pulse over to tens of hours. So see there's only, um, this one's a lot smaller than the other ones for tens of hours because you only need three digits, you need zero, one, and two. So, so this line right here, this is taking the current from zero. So when that's zero, that causes tens of hours to go. The issue comes when you want to loop over to days because days are 24 hours. You can't just get the clock to automatically reset back to zero. It has to loop through all of the other numbers too. So what I did was I put this one on zero and then I put another one on four. So when this hits four, this thing lights up here. This sends a current down this redstone pathway to this gate right here. This is an AND gate right here. So what does an AND gate do? AND gates only go off when you have two currents coming in at the same time. So this current has to be activated when four is turned on in the hours, and two has to be activated in tens of hours. So this is two. They come together, that lights this up, and then it sends current down here. These are called XOR gates. So what do XOR gates do? They send out pulses. So when the current comes through the AND gate, it sends a pulse through the XOR gate down. And then these channels have delays on them. So that way the delay time comes back to here. It loops back into hours down here. And hours goes back to zero. That's how the clock resets itself on days. So this is way more complicated than it needs to be. I figured out later on that I could make the um, hours loop over with only one XOR gate, but I was too lazy to rebuild it, so I just left it. So when the AND gate here goes off, it sends a pulse down to the XOR gate, to the XOR gates. That resets everything back to zero again. And then there's another pulse that is sent down here to days. So then days goes up one at a time. So this one here on days, I wanted to make it go to years. So I have one on zero that fixes the tens of days. And then I have another one here on five for 365 days in a year. So the five goes all the way down here. And then this is a double AND gate that I made. So it's just two AND gates put together and then they go into another AND gate. So three, there's three, six, five. So three is down here, six is here, and five is here. They all come together, and then that sends out a pulse through one XOR gate. That goes down through here. And then pulses are sent to the tens of days and to just regular days. And so that's how the years resets itself. So it, this gets pretty complicated in here. But it's, it, it's simple if you know what you're doing. So this is tens of days that we're looking at here. So zero, and then we have one on six here. So when six is lit up, that causes that to reset. And then this is um, hundreds of days. So this one has a line on three, and then it has one on zero, two. The one on zero isn't used at all. It just goes down. It's it's not used. I just didn't delete it because I was copying and pasting. So when all of these lines are lit up, when 365 are activated, it sends a pulse down through here that resets the number of days in the clock. It sends another pulse down here to years, and then years is updated. That's basically how it works. If you want to see another video on it, just let me know in the comments. Thank you. Bye.